Let's make some pizza dough. The night before you plan to mix your dough, mix together one quarter of a teaspoon of instant yeast, 100 grams of bread flour, and 100 grams of water. Stir this until there are no more lumps of flour in the mixture and until it's smooth, and then cover it up and leave it at room temperature overnight. It will grow in size and develop bubbles like this. Add that to your mix with 290 grams of water, a teaspoon of honey, a teaspoon of olive oil, and mix. Then you're going to add in 450 grams of bread flour, 50 grams of wholemeal or whole wheat flour, a quarter teaspoon of instant yeast, and 10 grams of salt. And then mix this with your hand or in a stand mixer. If you're doing it by hand, it may feel a little bit dry. Keep going, don't add more water. Scrape the sides down with a dough scraper if you can. If it sticks to your hand, dip your hand in water and then kind of squeeze the dough off just like that. <laughs> Cover it up for about 45 minutes, wet your hand, and then do a series of stretch and folds. This is where you pull the dough up and over itself. You want to create a tight ball. This helps build structure in the dough. You'll need to do this about three times over a period of about three to four hours before putting the dough into the fridge. I tend to space my stretch and folds about 45 minutes apart from one another. This is the last stretch and fold that I've performed on this particular batch of dough. You can see that the dough is a lot more aerated now. It's a lot stretchier. It feels more like the pizza dough should feel. I like to smooth it into a rough looking ball before I put it into a lidded container and put it into the fridge overnight. If you don't have a lidded bowl, then you can use Tupperware or you can use a shower cap or a plastic wrap on top of the bowl. Flour a surface and remove the dough from the bowl carefully, trying not to disturb too many of the bubbles in the dough. Then what I do is portion it out into four portions. So this is a kilogram or 2.2 pounds of dough. I portion my pizza dough balls into 250 gram or nine ounce balls. I like to weigh it on the scale just to be precise. Then I pre-shape the dough balls. So this involves sort of pulling each side of the ball in on itself, flipping it over, and then I use my hands to create tension in the ball and to sort of seal it at the seam at the bottom. Then I pick up the dough ball and kind of squeeze the bottom just to make sure it's completely tight and then repeat this process with the rest of the dough balls. You can also use a bench scraper to shape them. Then you're going to flour a pan with flour and semolina. You can just use flour, that's fine if you don't have semolina, and then coat the dough balls liberally in that mixture. Once they're all coated, just add a little bit more flour and then you can cover it with a tea towel. You can also cover it with plastic wrap or you can cover it with a tray that's the same size. Let it proof for about three to four hours. It should be puffy, stretchy, a lot softer than it was before. Then put on a floured surface, flip it over, press it out to kind of create a steering wheel shape, pick it up and stretch and kind of turn, stretch and turn like you would do a steering wheel. I do this until it feels like it's getting a little bit thinner, but not as thin as I need it completely. I rest it on the board and then I go in with my knuckles both hands and I kind of gently stretch it out just to get that middle base a little bit thinner. Then I pick it up and put it into a lightly oiled frying pan over a medium high heat. Put the toppings on while the bottom of the dough is crisping up. Once the base is crispy and brown, I put it into the oven on one of the upper racks under the broiler or grill for just a few minutes. Make sure it doesn't burn. This is such a great way of cooking your pizza at home. It always gives a really crispy crust. If you don't have a pizza oven, this is definitely the way I recommend to cook your pizza at home. Check out the caption for more info.